Okay, boys and girls, introduction, second part of Scoop mid main event review with Mario Mosbocek, a legend of the game now, Grindhouse member first uh, season and a really dear and close friend. We finally got him from playing 1814 and just folding every river to uh, not doing that anymore. So he turned that into winning the main and we're going to review every hand from the beginning that he VPI beat till the end and going to look for leaks and going to talk about hands. And so this is the second part we are going to continue. Uh, we're going to use Odin as well um, to check after we uh, shared our thoughts. So it's always going to be, we talk about the hand, we show what we think, and then we're going to look at different tools or solvers or other input and let's commence. Mario? Yeah. Let's go. Okay, the first hand, like we already made it into hand five of 450. So, I mean, we gotta be thorough. We gotta be thorough. Okay, MP opens. We squeeze. What, what is your approach? What, if, what is your approach if you see someone's 3x instead of like 2.2x or 2x alone? What would you adjust your? arranged to. Mm -hmm. So I would say the the population tendencies that I've seen is there's actually different combinations of or different structures of ranges. One thing that is very common throughout all these structured ranges is less, let's call them speculative hands. Mm -hmm. It's less often suited connectors. It's less often Broadway type of hands. So I would say there are people where there's just randomness in there. This is, I would say, the, the fewer part. So it could just be something like king three suited. Like, but that, that I would say is probably 10% or less of these opens I've seen. So then there are these people that do that with a more ace X and pair heavy range. Also more um, the higher pair type of range like eights or nines. And then there are these people who just do that with their stronger part of their range, which is just ace 10 or ace jack plus, and mostly then like nines to queens or kings. And very rarely this is aces and rarely kings. So that would be my observation from. Mm -hmm. So the, the default would be to squeeze. Would you adjust knowing that by sque squeezing a bit wider or what, what would be your, your, your range here? I think that it just makes me a bit more inclined mm -hmm. to squeeze and just very clear three bet folded. Mm -hmm. Because I think his four betting range will be pairs and ace king, and it's already a bit narrower range. So I, I think a three bet fold here is the most reasonable play. Mm -hmm. I squeeze, I get the call from the opener, the button folds. Okay. And now we already faced the first decision with an SPR of about 1.5. Yeah. It's I don't a, think it's a decision. You think it's a pure check? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's the thing now, right? After I define the range, I think it's pure check fault. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure in game if I check everything or if I sometimes bet with the ace of clubs for very small sizing. Mm hmm. But I'm yeah, given given that he constructs his range a little bit tighter, I think I need to be even more careful that it's more condensed around eights, nines, and hands that I'm already in front of like king queen suited, ace check suited. So I don't know what I did. I, I, actually one more thing I want to mention here is there are obviously like I, I what I said before, there are obviously good regs who have just a just a normal three Xing range, like what is that like? a 75 bb effective mm -hmm. but but there are two shorter stacks behind right like there is a 10 bb or like 12 bb stack um, two to his left and like it's just i i would say i would probably think that it's not just a, a linear his entire opening range that would be my assumption mm -hmm. i think i did bet 10 percent I don't really remember exactly why, but I think it's 
it is not big of a difference between betting 10% and checking. And with the Ace of Clubs, I did prefer to bet a little bit because people just tend to fold a bit too much because he's almost not supposed to fold anything. And it makes it a bit easier to play that hand as a 10% block but than a, than a check. That was my perception, I think. Oh, okay, but uh, what's the first hand that you think he, he plays like this and then falls now? Ace check. King, okay. king check. Yeah, or non back to flush draws. Yeah, that's the main that's the main part. Okay. Yeah. I mean I, I think most players don't fold that against that pet. Mm-hmm. And the thing is if like that's also something I think if he I think if he calls that pre flop, then he's very unlikely to fold that on a flop. Because okay. it's also three way, it's a four X size, like the the guy is a low stakes grinder. Like, mm-hmm. I, I just think uh, it's, I, I don't really see, I mean, now theoretically, the, this size, I also don't really think that size happens much, but I, uh, exploitatively, I would definitely not, not do that. I would just check it and um, I, I think you actually perform better with a check here than with a bet. Mm-hmm. I pull it up on Odin. Do, do you think his range changes from what we see on the right here? Like... Nines, ace nine suited to aces, fives to checks, queen check to the king ten suited. Is that about right? I think it's it's not too far off. Mm-hmm. Maybe a bit less of the like people generally. I think call a bit less. Like he probably calls zero of ace four through ace eight, and probably also doesn't call ace nine suited. So that would be the only thing. Also, I think sometimes people fold like king ten suited. So. And then maybe he folds fives, but like the, the direction of it, I think is very accurate. Mm-hmm. We actually do get to bet 40% of the time mm-hmm. against the, the opponent. And even for quite big sizing, I mean, I mean, they're obvious candidates at tens, checks and queens. And ace, queen with the ace in clubs bets also sometimes. But I, I think it's fine to just check them all the time if it's mixed like that. I mean... I, I think that just the ten percent sizing mm-hmm. doesn't accomplish enough for me here. Like mm-hmm. I, I, I can see that definitely there are some theoretical merit to it against obviously like King Jack Hearts and like mm-hmm. that that is the threshold. I do like a slightly bigger sizing a bit more though. Mm-hmm. Because I think I think that's where the threshold starts to become painful, right? Like if someone bets 10%, like King Jack of Hearts must be a continue. Yeah, w- once they fold that, then it's... Then, then it's great, uh, right? Like, then, very, then it's a great exploitative bet. But the thing is, like, I, I think that's not the threshold where people start folding it. Okay. You know, like, I, I think the threshold where people start folding it is, like, 18 to 25% pot. You know, if someone, if someone bets, like, 10K here, like, against 4K or 4.5K, I'm like... I mean, I'm... I, can you can you actually go on the two point five pp? I'm really curious of like what is the actual hand you're supposed to fold here? Because, I mean, that must be. I I, I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Nothing. King queen suited like. Okay. Ten percent of the time, I mean, so you're not supposed to fold anything basically. Like if someone folds ever the spot, then it becomes like a very. You give him a good chance to make a mistake by just folding king queen in hearts too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, it's just I, a, oh. one of these weird equity type of bets where you have a little equity advantage and you just kind of yeah, like it's as if you're checking to him just a little, a little pricey. Yeah, that that's I I, I I've seen in not many of these spots. I don't fully understand the concept yet. I cannot fully explain it why, but it's something where, like, if it's very close between check and the ten percent bet, then I just it's just sometimes better just give him the opportunity to fold a bit too much. He calls. What do you do on the turn? Ah, oh. yum yum yum, huh? <laughs> I mean, now, now we gotta go. Yeah. What is the sizing? I mean, small, yeah. for sure. 
Like I think now, now we can actually implement something that, that Stefan has been talking about quite a bit is we call it the lookalike principle. It's actually one of my favorite principles that he talks about. And so just think about which hand is the most likeliest value hand that's the, that this hand looks alike or the other way around a value hand. And then what's the most likely bluff that kind of looks like the value hand. Yeah. And so, for example, you know, when you check raise the river with a hand and you have the nut straight, then bluff a hand that looks the closest to the nut straight, you know, because it's probably the most likely bluff that you will find if it's around blockers. So here the same, right? Like which hand looks the most likely is to this is, you know, we have the nut flush or something similar. So the, the thing is actually, we should not have too many suited aces here. What, what is it in, in a squeeze spot like that? I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't squeeze too wide here with the uh, um, we suited have, ace That is our preflop squeeze range. So we have ace queen, ace king, ace 10, ace nine, sometimes ace five suited. So ace five is not in the range, ace nine as well. Yeah. So ace 10, ace jack, ace queen. And then the king check. Okay, the queen 10 uh, check 10 suited combinations. Man, I love these spots where jack 10 is just a pure squeeze. Like, it's just my favorite. You know, it's just like, I, I mean, then I always have to think of a hand. I gotta, I gotta spoil it just a little bit or, or, or track this, uh, go, take this a bit off track where we are, I think, eight left and 100k in the Bellagio and it's seven paid and a big pay jump and I open from the hijack, I think button flats, small blind flats. And I'm, I think second in chips or third in chips. And I squeezes from the big blind to like 15 big blinds, 13, 15 big blinds. And I shove like 39. I, I don't remember exactly. And he calls off with Jack 10 suited. What? <laughs> <laughs> It was, it, I mean, maybe I'm getting, I, I might be getting the big blinds off right now, but it was basically that I, I think it might've been that he, like he, he, in terms of chip EV, he, he definitely got uh, the equity, I think against my shoving range. Yeah. Um, if I shove ace king pure and depending on what pockets I shove, but it was just so absurd in terms of uh, like payouts, how he was, I think first or second in chips and just 90 big blind pot. <laughs> or 95 BB pot and he, he, he squeeze calls checked and suited. So that was, uh, <laughs> uh first you won. Yeah, yeah. He won. He won. Okay. Oh, he won. Are yeah. You... Yeah. I bubbled. I bought that. I mean, that's why I didn't forget. So, <laughs> okay. Let's, let's take, so what, what are your thoughts, Mario on this? I mean, you, you asked me, but, but, but what, what do you think about this hand? How do you go through this process? Like that's, that's important for everyone watching, right? Like what's going through that big brain of yours? So the flop, as I said, I'm not really sure. That's one thing that we we uh, discovered a lot that we used the 10% sizing. I'm not 100% sure where to use it exactly. And it felt like with the Ace of Clubs, it's something that we can use just to give him the opportunity to sometimes fold broadways. And it's probably similar between check and, and uh, 10%. So I did go for the 10%. And once I arrive on the turn, I mean, I, I just have to fire through. It's one of the the best bluffs me to have because I block all of his nut flushes. So that's a huge part. And I do have quite some mail with like queen check suited, check 10 suited, ace 10, ace check suited. And therefore I need to find the right uh, amount of bluffs. And here in the turn, I don't need a, a big sizing. I, I already put pressure on six or sevens with a small bet, um, even for like 25%. And then I basically know that I'm already shoving most rivers because it's just the hand that I, I want to follow through. And uh, there's no need to bet for bigger sizing. Uh, I give him also a chance to to make a, a bigger mistake already in the turn by not continuing as much because he's supposed to continue more against the small sizing. Um, and it's or if he's already folding out enough, then it's just a very profitable bet on the turn. That, yeah, that was my perception. It's been a while, but I think that's how... And obviously, like, that Sunday 8... 8 p.m. and 12 tables open, so it doesn't work exactly like that. It's just like, okay, green, I have another green card, and uh, we bet. So, <laughs> nah, but uh, that's about how, um, how I would see the spot right now. 
And I think actually one one pretty important thing here is that you didn't mention is in my opinion the biggest upside of the small bet is not what he continues with or you know how much he continues with let's say it like this mm-hmm. it's actually you get him into a game tree where he is definitely not good at balancing the raising range mm-hmm. that's the actual interesting thing you know if someone starts folding like king queen a bit too much yeah okay you know but with ace queen that's not the the absolute winning thing here but it's more about like if you take a look in in Orin at like what's he's what is he supposed to raise on a flop against this that is actually not so easy to implement yeah you know it's not so easy to raise like only call nines yeah most people raise you know almost only call eights most people raise like you know call a decent frequency of jacks and tens is like most people raise so he, the, the really great thing about these small bets is if your opponent makes mistakes, then it's most likely makes mistakes in the raising tree and had the raises too much. And that's where you can fire off in the um, bet call tree. Mm-hmm. So that's actually the more interesting exploit here. Yeah. And also the, the, the value part uh, is easy to raise a bit too much because I think the bluff part is not that easy. Like he's, He's supposed to raise king queen in hearts and king queen in diamonds as well as in the king check combinations sometimes, and I think that's almost never happening. And uh, although un- don't underestimate that, like there, I, I would say, like I, I mean, I we have these conversation constantly. Is I, I think population is being perceived as too passive, just yeah. because the majority of players does not really like just autopilots this stuff. Never forget that there are some players who attack these spots aggressively. Like, for example, this would be the first thing I would be attacking. It's like, there's no way you're betting your 10s for 10%, like ever, you know? So, I mean, okay, I'm looking forward to the moment you show me that. But till then, I will be raising my King Jack pure against, against that size. So I want to see you continuing against like the, you know, 9 BB raise here. Yeah. And that's not just 4X to bet or whatever. Like, it's not so fun to continue with the, the range I believe you have when, uh, when you bet 10% here. Mm-hmm. We can safely go over that. Okay, he's, he's pretty clearly a... I know if he has a pretty advanced limp and 3X strategy or if it's just... I can game. confirm he's not. He does not. <laughs> so I saw three point five x. He calls. I have a small sizing. I think would you go sometimes even bigger with ace check to ace king, just because there's many middle in uh, ace x. Or would you just? I think it's one of these boards where I actually used to make very big mistakes. Ep versus bb. Mm-hmm. I had a session with Stefan on this and. I remember there being no big sizings. <laughs> it's under the gun limp. I, I, I know, I know, so. I know. But I, I, I'm just now. That's why I'm thinking because these like these ace three five ace two four ace two three like type of boards are actually quite different. And I did not like logically. I cannot explain very well yet. I, I think it has a lot to do with the distribution of equity over t- over different runouts but yeah i i generally just out of out of my gut i would go for a smaller bet here like a third pot and wouldn't really think too much about mm-hmm. um, going too large here i would say i have a pretty clear turn bet somewhere between two thirds and half pot we, I, we don't want to go too big yeah he calls river is a six and I check back. Would it go for value again or do you check it back? I mean, it, this spot is pretty clear, right? You're just value betting against ace eight through ace 10. Yeah. And I don't really think that people are, like I think people fold this here and I think it's reasonable to fold it here. Mm-hmm. So I would never go for a value bet here. With ace king? Also 
less likely. It would probably be the hand I would bet, mm -hmm. but I think that the difference is not too not too big. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like Ace Jack, I think that's probably the hand people would you know call the most often. It's just it's just a matter of how often does he you know limp call Ace four here pre Ace five Ace six Ace seven, and I think it is. A reasonable amount, so I would also tend for it to a check back here with Ace King. Mm -hmm. Next hand was Ace King suited. Okay. What is your high check against cutoff? What would you? How would you see that? Uh, what do you mean high check against cutoff? Uh, the multi way spot here. What would uh, you? What would you have yeah, process? Uh, process be? Uh, Mine is pretty clear. Um, what, what's yours? Let me, you, you start and... I think cutoff against button, we almost always check because we have such a wide range. It's a condensed range and also three-way. Um, so we have very, very little betting, but a substantial check squeezing, or check raising frequency. Probably ace king is a, a check call and maybe something like ace six or ace four is check raise. So I would very high frequency check overall and with this specific hand or a clear check. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I would have pure checked this hand. Yeah. Goes for 35%, something around that. Yeah. Check call. What would be the threshold that you start check raising? Like Ace King is too strong. Yeah, it's a good question. I think in these type of spots, I mean, there's these obvious hands, right? Like there's, there's the obvious ace, four, ace, deuce type of candidates that, that in terms of equity have a little bit extra added. I'm trying to browse through hands that have good equity, but that are not favorable to call. And I would probably, it's most likely just two over cards. Yeah. Like I don't, like queen of diamonds. Could be a decent check raising hand, like ace ace jack off or ace queen off might be one. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, as you mentioned, ace six backdoor or ace four, like these would be my only like I wouldn't even go beyond that much. You know, mm -hmm. like I wouldn't even think about any other hand than that. Mm -hmm. I think that's also enough. Like if you have the queen check suited back to flash door, or king check back to flash door. Yeah, you definitely cannot raise all of them, so yeah. That's already enough. It's just a question of picking right frequency for them. Mm -hmm. Barris for half pot. Yeah, that's a similar spot. I think it's too strong to to check raise yet. Maybe something like a6 is a check raise turn, but ace king is, I would say, a check call. I mean, so. yeah, super, super easy, pure check raise in my opinion. Check raise? Uh, check call, sorry. Now you said check raise. No, check call, definitely call. And no. For a second. He continues to bet on the river. And once I arrive on the river, it's uh, not a hand that I want to have as a bluff catcher because we block the backdoor flush doors that he bluffs with and we just have better candidates. Like any 10 is better, any ace five in hearts is better. Yeah, I don't see a reason to mm -hmm. check call this. This line and also that he betting on the flop into three players already and to two players and this range is already a bit stronger than just heads up yeah 